first. I think we can get you all in here. Battery How are we doing? Side. Everyone's in here. Left. <laughs> Everyone's in. Not yet. Is there? Is, is this where all the uh, reprints collected? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. You see one gray line running up over that way, and a second one up there. Scoot back, people, or if there's no room. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. No. Anyway, it, you can see this cable coming down. One of those runs out to the uh, building way over there that has the panels. Uh, and this one runs to one the one in the middle to one set of panels and this uh, wire uh, tubing runs to the second on this building, okay? That is producing the DC electricity. It comes down and flows to the controller. This protects the batteries from overcharging and protects them from losing the electricity back out to the panels at night. Okay, all the electricity I generate from the solar panels goes into this battery pack. If, uh, no, these are deep cycle. A car battery needs a lot of electricity instantly to turn the motor over. These uh, can take a very deep charge, a lot of electricity, and release it slowly. Mm -hmm. oh. So it's a different kind of battery that very you need. Efficient. And uh, common, it's common in golf carts, in uh, outboard motors, and, and things like that. Uh, there are... Sorry. I've got to watch the voltage in these batteries because they're lead acid batteries and the lead accumulates on one of the posts and so every so mm -hmm. often I've got to go from 52 volts and run it up to 56 volts for about two or three hours that drives the chemicals that have accumulated on one of the posts off the post mm -hmm. and that's called equalizing the uh, batteries mm -hmm. that has to be done about four times a year you can get it automated so that it, the system just turns on a switch in effect and does it. I also have to check water levels to maintain water in here. And I've got it isolated out here because when you're producing electricity, you can get some hydrogen release because <laughs> yeah. it'll split the water into oxygen and That'll hydrogen. Explode. The hydrogen could accumulate and be explosive. Yeah. And so that's why I have it in a well ventilated area. Mm. Otherwise, I'd have to have a pipe running from these and back out. This will give us enough electricity to run our house eight hours if the grid goes down, if the electrical service from the utility mm. stops. I could expand the battery pack in for more hours, but. I just chose to do it this size. Uh, after the power comes back up and moves into these are called inverters. Mm -hmm. They take the DC power, direct current, convert it to alternating power mm -hmm. and matches AC, what DC. I'm getting from this box from the utility, Commonwealth Edison. Mm -hmm. It has to be on the same 60 cycle that they have. All right? 
And so then now I can feed this electricity to my house and it will meet my house needs, 60% of it. When I'm producing too much for our house, too much for my batteries, it actually flows back out to the utility. They call that net metering and they essentially give me the same price that they charge me for my electricity. <laughs> the utilities aren't too happy about that and they're sort of fighting back right mm. now. But that's the system that's in place. And uh, after we did all of this, that wind generator came on sale. And as I told you, I don't like to climb that much anymore. <laughs> but it was a big bargain. And so uh, their prices were going to go up $1,000. That wow. unit cost us 5000 And they were going to go up 1000 So I said, you know, Sorry. if I buy it and I never use it, I know I could sell it for close to what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. When we put it in, this is a 48 volt system that gets transferred up to 120 volts. My battery system is a 48 volt system. The wind generator was 24 volts. So I had a problem. How am I going to get the batteries to accept 24 volt power when it's a 48 volt battery system? Mm -hmm. So we were playing, friends and I, and we said, oh, let's try. We'll charge half of the battery one day and the other half of the battery set the next day. That didn't work. No. <laughs> then we decided to put in a, a relay that would automatically switch between mm -hmm. the two sets of batteries. It took one minute for it to just go up and smoke. Oh, so, no. Then we bought a step-up transformer. So it takes the 48 volt, elect 24 volt, and turns it up to 48 that we can uh. put in the battery. Now, each time you put one of these devices in, you lose efficiency. Mm. All right, so uh, that means you're wasting some of the, some of the electricity is turning in the heat when you do that. So it's not as efficient as it could be. The other thing, uh, a lightning strike yeah. can either hit the power line and come into your house oh. or it can hit the panels and move down through the panels. Yeah. And we lost one inverter oh, no. in, in the last 10 years to a lightning strike. So we put a lot more of these on. See these little coils here? Yeah. They are to accept that extra power that comes and it protects the equipment. So we haven't had that problem since. In places that are real rocky, they actually will put a, almost like an umbrella above the, <laughs> the solar system. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of wires like a TV antenna. So that becomes the place where the lightning strikes rather than the panels. Yeah. Now, this is ground. There's a ground, oh, there's a ground. running here that is supposed to take that electricity and move it away from the system and send it down into the ground. But we live, there's rock, a rocky layer, real shallow here, and we've got a lot of sand. So what we were told to do was put a whole bunch of new soil in place and uh, put a copper mat under it so the ground un grounding unit is bigger than just a little rod and put a rod on each side of the mat and then plant flowers on top of it. Now why would I plant flowers on top of it? Beautification. Your wife's... Your wife's... <laughs> That's right, it's got something to do with my wife. Good <laughs> what I was told was that when the flowers begin to wilt, it means they need water. Oh. And for an electric ground to work, you need to keep the ground moist. Because if it isn't moist, the electricity won't flow to it. Yeah, so that was a very good answer. <laughs>
I think Miles, you better watch out all the ladies. Are <laughs> very interested in you because you know how to please. Any questions about this? Okay. These keep dropping in price too. They used to cost a dollar a watt, and now they're down to about 25 cents.